We're making a lure. Ah, oh my goodness, wow. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. We're gonna be making a lure today. The weather outside is pretty miserable. And you know what? This is just a good thing to know how to do. What are we making? First off, I wanna talk about my favorite lure of all time, the Hedden Torpedo. This is a great lure, especially for early in the snakehead season. Relatively small profile, it has this propeller on the back. It resists actively the movement of the lure forward. Other lures, jump frogs or things like this Abergast buzz plug, the, the blade sits on the front. That's not really what I'm looking for. I want something that's gonna drag on the back. The Head and Torpedo is a great model for that. But there are some things that are not great. It's got treble hooks. And if you are fishing for a snakehead, especially if you're fishing for snakehead in a kayak, treble hooks are not your friend. Often you'll only have one prong embedded in the fish's lip, which means that there are two prongs waiting to go into your leg. That's not a good thing. The hook on the underside of the belly is not ideal. That kind of stops the lure from being weedless. We could remove all of this assembly uh, and, and you know replace this tail hook with a frog hook, and that would make this a fantastic lure, but I wanted something a little bit bigger, a little bit more substantial. This right here. This is a lure that I have designed. What you have is a wooden frog body. It has a through wire construction. Let me grab my pointer so I can look professional. It starts here at the eyelet, makes its way through the body of the frog, exits the body of the frog. Then the first thing that you hit is a bead. Um, after that bead, you have a propeller. In this case, it's a one and a quarter inch. Then you have another bead. Then you have your last knot. Um, and then after that, you have a uh, split ring that holds on a frog hook. This is gonna be a top wire lure. So we need to make sure that we are using wood that is positively buoyant. In this case, we are using a nice little chunk of basswood. This is available at pretty much any craft store. It's really inexpensive. Hopefully this will do the trick. All right, let's get down to it. The only piece that we're gonna be concerned about is the piece that we're intending to carve. Then we're gonna transfer this onto the side of our chunk of wood. Now, the amount of time that you should expect to spend on a lure like this one, depending on the level of intricacy that you want to go to, is, you know, it could be as little as an hour, or it could be as much as half a day. Uh, in this case, let's see how the spirit moves us. The next step here is to take this over to a bandsaw and get it cut to shape. Before I forget, if you don't have a bandsaw, it's really not that big a deal. A coping saw or a scroll saw Either one of those will do just fine. It's it's not rocket surgery. Now that the general outline has been applied to our frog, we have some cleaning up to do. We also have to make some decisions here. Exactly how wide do we want this frog to be? I think I want to go a little bit wider with this one. One inch might be a little bit narrow. One and a quarter is just about right. Now what we need to do is cut the remaining chunk off using the bandsaw. And we managed to make the cut without anyone losing a finger. That means our center line is going to be uh, half an inch plus one eighth. So five eighths, five eighths of an inch. So we use our calipers again. A, a ruler works just fine. I. I'm just bougie. So we're gonna mark our center line here. When we go to cut this, we're cutting a groove for our through wire to sit. So the place where that's gonna stop is roughly in the middle of the nose of this frog and roughly in the middle of the opposite of the nose of this frog. Why am I cutting the through wire channel now? Uh, the reason for that is I've got nice square sides to go inside of my vise. It's real easy to hold on to. It's real easy to make sure I'm keeping straight. If I waited until you know, after the, the frog had been carved, then that would you know make things harder for me than they need to be. You see what I'm talking about right there, right? Right there. And nice and straight. So our channel is cut, it's centered nicely. The next step that we're actually gonna use on this, not everybody's gonna have access to this tool, but it's really helpful if you have a belt sander 
Uh, even one of the ones that's like a handheld that you could mount into a vise or a disc sander, it just saves you a bunch of time. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna round out this belly edge here. Let's go ahead and uh, get that cleaned up. All right, so now we have a nice smooth belly, right? Um, the top, we're not so worried about the top. The reason we're not too worried about the top is because this is where we're gonna be doing a lot of our carving here in a minute. Now we need to figure out what the dimensions of the eyes are going to be. So again, it's a good idea to find your center line. Hopefully this is still set. And we're gonna mark the space that sits in between where the two eyes are gonna be. Roughly five eighths, five eighths. Now, this is basswood, so it's gonna carve really, really easily. But to go ahead and get things started off, I'm gonna carve a notch right here. And now that notch should be lined up exactly with where your through wire is gonna be. I'm not at all comfortable with this knife. Go out and you buy a new tool thinking, oh, well, you know, this is gonna be even better. It's not, it's not better than what you already have. Right here, good old fashioned Craftsman utility knife. Doesn't have to be a fancy exacto. All right, that's in the ballpark where we want to be. So the next thing we're going to do is grab a rat tail file, right? We're going to go ahead and wear this down. And the objective here is to take that carved line down until this sits flush. Like you're going to follow the line from the nose up to this little hump on the back here. Every once in a while, check to make sure that you're centered. A little mistake can turn into a big mistake really, really quickly. The next thing we gotta do is figure out what our profile on the sides of the frog body are gonna be, right? So we gotta pick a line, kinda, let's, let's do the front first. That I want this frog to have as much mass as possible because I really want it to float. So I'm gonna make it intentionally broad. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna try to match as best you can from both sides. And we're gonna do the same back here. Is that right? Basically mess with this until we got the right feel. But you can carve this by hand or you can once again go over to your sander. And now we are starting to see the shape of our frog. So we gotta figure out what our camper lens are gonna be. Now, like I said, I wanna preserve as much material on this frog as I can, but we also have to make it look somewhat realistic. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna choose the lines that we want to grind away. And remember, once it's gone, it's gone. You're not getting it back. Like so many things in life. This is where we're gonna start to carve. And again, every once in a while, check your symmetry. Symmetry is important, right? Not just because it looks good, but because it influences the performance of the lure, right? You want things to be even. And you can always make little corrections, but it's better not to make huge mistakes in the first place. Incidentally, carving is the thing that you do to establish a rough shape. Um, it's not the thing that you're gonna do to achieve your final shape. So if you do draw these lines, when you're messing with a bandsaw, or if you are carving with your pocket knife or whatever it is that you're using. Don't go all the way to the line with an edge. Use your sander to get you all the way home. And that way you can really control, really be dialed in on how much material you're removing. Also important, at this stage, when you are carving and you're using a knife, number one, don't get greedy. Taking off too much material is never good. And number two, if you start to feel yourself getting impatient, walk away. I have more scars on my fingers than I would care to admit. You know, they were the result of impatience. Put on some music and enjoy watching this thing take shape. Now I'm going to go back to using my rat tail file behind 
the eyes. Ah, I almost broke my own rule. Give yourself a channel to act as a guide. Make sure that it's in the spot that you want it to be. All right. Now we're going to round off the edges of these eyes. If you plan to do yours exactly like this one, you're going to want to leave at least somewhat of a flat spot on the side of these eyes because we are going to use uh, stick-on eyeballs to really kind of complete the illusion that we're going for here. All right, so we have the general shape of the eyes pretty much where we want them to be, right? Now it's time to start tapering the edges off that flow into the belly. Okay, so we've got the rough shape of the whole frog in three dimensions carved out. Now it's time to figure out where we plan to put our eyes. And the reason that we're going to do this now is because we still have a little bit of a flat spot on the side, which really comes in handy when you got to drill a small hole. Make sure to create a straight line reference across the tops of the eyes so that you know that you're positioning the eyes in exactly the same place. Because if you don't, I think it's pretty awkward. You get like a weird looking like, chameleon frog thing going on. And nobody wants that, right? Make sure you mark the exact center of where you want the eye to be in a way that leaves you plenty of material around where that eye is going to go so that you don't have just like an eye floating off into space or coming too close to an edge. In this case, we are using a one quarter inch eye right here, which means we are going to square this up with a one quarter inch brad point drill bit. Now, brad point is great because it's already got like a little center punch. I'll show you what I'm talking about. See a little point right there in the middle? That allows you to put perfect placement on your drill bit. If you have a good sharp drill bit, it's going to do all the work for you. Just use your hand. All you want is a nice clean little circle. It needs to be just deep enough that it will allow your eye that you're going to use to sit down in that pocket. It's not perfect, but it's okay. Now the other thing about getting to this stage is it tells you how much more material you have to carve around that eye. And for something like this, let's get all these sharp out of the way. It's always good to have an X-Acto knife handy. Be careful when you're messing with this because when you slip with an X-Acto, it will go down to the bone quickly. Ask me how I know. Okay. I'm thinking that I'm pretty happy with this. Now there are some like still ed you know, edges that are a little hard that could stand to be rounded off. The sanding process is gonna take care of most of that for us. Generally, I like to start with 150 grit. This takes a while. One of the things that sucks about getting old is that you can't see what you're doing very well anymore. So this is the part where I put on the old spectacles. Does that work? Can I see? Is that it? Huh? Huh? Now once you get around the eyes, That's better. Once you get around the eyes, it can be uh, a little bit persnickety. So you've probably noticed that I've had this emery board uh, sitting here next to me throughout this entire process. These are fantastic for fine and detail sanding and they're cheap as they come. Wow. I think we pretty much have our frog. Got a nice wide head, right? 
This is going to move a lot of water up towards the front. Got a nice wide body. This should glide well. This is big enough and wide enough that, you know, with this kind of buoyancy of wood, it should be able to hold up plenty of hook. Next thing that we need to do is set up our through wire. So for our through wire, we're going to be using 16 gauge saltwater rated stainless steel. And there's really only one set of specialized tools that I would recommend that you'd use, and these are these round nose pliers. They make eyelets a lot easier. Um, you want to get the wire as straight as you can get it, but when you want to start out your eyelet, use your pliers, right? Give yourself a nice little bend here, then come around on the other side and grab it. And you want to bend this over so that you end up with twists happening around the center of the eyelet. Just keeps everything nice and clean. And for this, you don't have to go around a crazy number of times. One full wrap. All right. And if you still got that emery board, highly recommend you hit the end of this because it's no fun to have that sucker poke you. Now, this is gonna go off the nose of your frock. See, I have these bins in the wire. If you think about this three-dimensionally, what those bends do is they stop if there's ever any twist or torque applied to this. You don't want this wire just running through, right? Because it'll be able to spin. You don't want the wire to be able to spin. Make sure that you've got vertical orientation for the nose eyelet, and then you're gonna wanna do a 90 degree bend at the beefiest part of the frog. You just bend it 90 degrees. Aha, glad I was paying attention. This 90 degree bend would have really screwed me up because it would have caused the orientation to be all wrong. Grab this again. It doesn't have to be a big bend. Just like that. And you're gonna to wanna to press that all the way in as best you can. The next step that we're gonna get into is kind of counterintuitive. We need to drill holes so that we can put just a little bit of weight in this frog. Now the weight Make sure that the frog orients correctly after you cast it. So once it hits the water, you want it to be heads up. And that's going to be really important when it comes to the hooks here in a minute. There you go. Just like that. All right. So what are we going to do for weight? We are going to use split shot weights. These are three out. What you want is for the sinker to fit all the way in so that when I go to cover these holes up, None of that sticks out. And the best activator there is for super glue is baking soda. Now this is going to act as our filler. Make sure it's packed in. Just one drop. Come on. We'll grab our exacto knife and we'll get to exacting. That's done. The next step after this is a bead off the back with a propeller and then another bead and then we're going to have another eyelet. For our beads, you can get these at any craft store. These are six millimeter plastic beads. We're going to grab a one and a quarter inch propeller. And these are available online through your various bait manufacturer shops. Make sure your orientation has the propellers leaning backwards. And then we're gonna have one more bead. And then it's time to tie that rear eyelet. Now, you don't want this to be crazy tight because you want the propeller to be able to spin freely. So leave yourself a little bit of room for your wraps, right? Maybe right about here is where you wanna be. Where you wanna make that first bend out. Good. You're going to come back at it from the other direction. Doesn't have to be huge. This eyelet you want to be positioned horizontally. We're going to use a, uh, a split ring to connect to our hook. All right now we're going to cut that off. And once again we're going to hit that with the emery board. Vertically oriented eyelet on the front and a horizontally oriented eyelet on the back and a free spinning propeller. Starting to look like a lure, right? That's pretty cool. 
The next thing we need to do is make our hook. We're going to take advantage of the design from the Abergas buzz plug, basically a floating buzz bait that uses a trailing frog hook. Same design that you see Mega Frox Goliath buzz bait. Three aught hooks, that's ballpark. Three aught. These are probably two aught frog hooks, which I don't have access to. So we're going to use the three and have some concerns about weight. Because of those concerns about weight, I'm going to try something never really tried before. And that's attempting to float the hook itself. This is a piece of foam insulation. It's really nothing special. You notice that I've cut it so that it's cone shaped. And I'm going to set that right there. It means we're going to have to use a split ring. First things first, we're going to apply a small dab of glue to try to keep this in place as close to the eye of the hook as possible. We're going to turn that hook right into an asset that will look like the legs of a frog. that is really secure. Adding that foam in the back gives you something that spreads the feathers out, basically masks the hook itself, and it gives you a little bit buoyancy off of the back here. We're almost ready to attach this. When you put this on, you gotta make sure that those hooks are oriented into the upward position. If you orient it the other way, they're gonna get snagged on everything. The next step here is to thoroughly coat this with super glue. Top tip, acetone takes super glue right off your hands. Make sure you wash your hands afterwards. I mean, I'm not going to, but you should. Okay, next step is application of the eyes. Now these already have sticky backs to them, and that makes our life a lot easier. But you look at the orientation of the eye, right? This is a pair, and I want to say the narrow part goes to the back. It, no, no, whatever it is, we'll go narrow part to the front. And if you're worried about these falling off, our clear coat is going to go over all of this to make sure everything stays where it's supposed to. Give this a quick wipe down. Denatured alcohol takes the dust off. Set up correctly. Put his face upward. The mechanism moves freely. It's time to dunk this in our urethane. It's going to drip for quite a while. Come back and check on this in the morning.
it helps if you push the record button here at the local pond. Lure is 100% dry now. May need some more finish work and sanding, but it's good enough to find out what the action on it is. Let's see what we got. Should be interesting. Boy, that sucker just sits right up on top. Looks like our hooks are floating. Lure sitting up in the water like a cork. Orientation is right. Let's bring it up here closer. Dude, I am stoked. All right, there it is. All right, try it again. Want to flip over? May need a little bit more weight. Yeah, definitely needs a little bit more weight. It's wanting to go belly up about 50% of the time. Successful first test. Well, given that this is definitely not the right time of year to be throwing frogs, it's really cold outside, pretty windy. I'm stoked. This thing is going to work out great. I think I may need to add a little bit of weight to the underside of the frog to make sure that it swims upright. I need to make that split ring a little bit smaller. But in principle, it's going to be a killer topwater bait come this summer. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Smash that like button if you learned something. I know I did. Feel free to go ahead and click subscribe too. Hit that bell so that you get to see all the cool stuff. And remember, it's never too late to care again. Did that work? Can I see? Oh.